One of the things I really enjoy about Venice as a photographer is that I'm able to photograph at virtually any time of day. To be sure, the best light's going to happen, of course, early in the day or late in the day, but because there are many narrow canal ways, we can actually get good opportunities at virtually any time of day. If there is full sun, even at high noon, many of the canals, depending on which direction they're facing, will have partial shade. Maybe one side will be in shade and the other side will be in sun. And that's exactly what I have here. Behind me, all of the buildings are completely in shade, whereas in front of me, the buildings are mostly getting the sunlight. And because of that sunlight on the brightly painted building, I've got wonderful reflections in the foreground, in the water. And so I'm going to focus on those reflections. And of course, I want to first find a good spot. Here I've got good sunlight. I also have a good building. Many of the buildings here are old masonry buildings that don't have a lot of color to them, and therefore the reflections are not quite as interesting. But here I have a brightly painted building that is producing some wonderful reflections. So when I'm photographing reflections, initially getting things set up, I want to think about the composition first and foremost. And there might be a tendency in many cases to sort of broaden your view a little bit. This is sort of common in general photographically, but I think when it comes to reflections, there does tend to be, for me and for many photographers, a tendency to sort of broaden the view and try and include as much of the reflections as you possibly can. Instead, I try to keep things as interesting and as simple as possible by zeroing in on a specific area of the reflections. So in this case, I have a building over toward the left. It's sort of salmon colored, and that comes up against the yellow building that I want to photograph the reflections of. I might be tempted to include that salmon building, then we get some color contrast, for example, but now I've got such a wide view that the viewer really doesn't know what they're looking at or what they should be looking at. There isn't a key subject. I also, when I tighten up my overall composition, I want to make sure that I'm not including the darker edge areas. So there's you know, sunlight on the building, of course, and then at some point we drop down far enough where we're seeing shadow at the bottom of the building. In terms of the re reflection, that creates a very dark area. Then that contrasts significantly with the bright colors that I'm seeing in the foreground. I don't want those dark edge areas to be included in the frame because it just creates a dark edge that's not that interesting. And so I'm really going to zoom in very tightly. And in this case, the windows that are shuttered with green paint uh, on those shutters, creating a nice color contrast, there's a pair and then a single. And so we've got a sort of interesting rhythm as it were. So I'm going to zoom in on an area where I've got two shutters and then a single shutter and that will give me an interesting composition. I want to allow a little bit of space around the edges because as the ripples of the water change position, the distortion's going to change. And so you can sort of think of it as those reflections kind of growing and shrinking. I want to allow a little bit of room for that. And then I'll of course set my focus, make sure I'm focused right on the surface of the water there. In this situation, I've set my aperture to f8. I've brought my ISO up to 400 so that I can get a reasonably fast shutter speed. Normal metering, matrix metering, is actually working really well here. There's some bright reflections, the white paint versus the darker greens and yellows. But all things considered, on balance, that's producing a good average amount of light that's giving me a good metering. So that's working well. I'm ending up with a shutter speed of 1 350th of a second. So now that I have everything locked in, it's a simple matter of firing away. In this situation, it's best to use a cable release just so you can kind of watch the surface of the water without having to look through the viewfinder and then fire at will. And I do recommend capturing lots of variations here. It's almost impossible to predict exactly what you're going to end up with, which is part of the fun of this type of photography with reflections. And depending on whether there's a little burst of wind so we get smaller ripples on the water versus a little break in the wind where we're ending up with much smoother textures, you're going to find that there is tremendous variability. And if a boat were to pass by, then we'd really have a lot of chaos in terms of the textures that we're seeing. And so I want to capture images under a variety of different circumstances, and then even with a given circumstance. So if I see the smooth water is looking especially good, I'll want to capture a few images in sequence because each one of those will vary tremendously in terms of the final look.
So I'll continue capturing some images here. I could certainly look for other compositions, but frankly I find that once I've found a composition that I feel is really working, it's mostly about capturing a sequence of images so that I have lots of variability in terms of that subject. But naturally, I could move up and down along the canal here, find different framing, and even from standing at the same spot, find a different area to zoom in on in order to vary that composition. But I think one of the most important things, we already have beautiful reflections, beautiful texture, beautiful color. Now we need to think about, in my opinion, simplifying that composition as much as possible so that we come away with the most interesting interesting photo possible.